Good afternoon. And um, I think I need to adjust my camera. Good afternoon. Beautiful sunny day outside. So why am I done up like a Christmas tree? <laughs> well, this is the cardigan I finished. I started it actually ages ago before my shoulder started. <coughs> Excuse me, being bad. Um, it's some yarn that uh, I got given by Jackie. Thank you very much, Jackie. And uh, hello, Daniel, if you're watching. And it's a very old pattern. Very, very, very old pattern. So sorry to annoy you old people, but you probably won't be able to get it. It's an emu pattern, and it's supposed to be done in Mystique, which was a fluffy yarn, which is long, long gone. We're talking 20 years gone, so you probably will never see a pattern like that again. Um, I made this is actually a bit thick, really. It's more going to be for winter. I'll just stand up so you can see the bottom half of it. It's got drawstrings on it. Um, an unusual feature on the shoulders. And uh, the drawstrings. I mean, basically, the unusual feature at the shoulders is just basically you do uh, two rows of, well, double crochet if you're in England, single crochet if you're in the States. Um, around the armhole and you sew the sleeve head in you know behind that so it gives it like a ridge this top detail here is just um, you know our double crochet or single crochet into the back loops of everything that gives it like a shoulder effect anyway if you don't mind I'm going to take it off because I'm absolutely boiling and anyway I want to show you what's underneath why am I wearing purple beads you might say because I've been out to breakfast with my niece and uh, I was wearing this jacket, which of course has the purple edging on it. And a uh, black dress and purple boots. So right, I'm going to take off this jacket because it is rather warm. Let me just take it off for a moment and show you what I've finished, what I'm wearing underneath. Now this is one that you can get the pattern of because I've only had this pattern for a couple of weeks. It's, um, I think I showed it before. Why don't I get my props ready before I start? Just taking this opportunity to film this while everybody's out because the dogs have come for a walk. It's a King Cole pattern, number 4494. It's got that pattern and it's also got that pattern. I've made it longer because, uh, and I haven't put the furry edge on, although I might do later, you know, the shell edging. I thought I was running out of yarn but I think I still got enough to put a shell edge in on it. I made it one whole pattern longer because I don't like things that stop you know about the belly and it's to go with that beautiful skirt let me show the neckline off to go with that beautiful skirt that uh, my friend Janica got for me for a belated birthday present and I didn't have a well it's not really pink it's more like a salmony pink colour this is in uh, pure cotton. It's in Louisa Hardin. Again, a discontinued thing. So that's why I'm actually wearing purple bees with a pink top. <laughs> I like to clash at times. You know, it's just very predictable, isn't it, when you're, uh, you know, wearing all the samey samey. Why am I actually wearing purple clogs? <laughs> Crocs. Um, I did have purple boots on before, but it's a bit warm outside. It's a gorgeous, glorious day outside. Uh, this is one of the cardigans I finished off ages ago, if you can still see it. Plus my array of sun hats at the top. Uh, what else did I get? Well, I think I've told you a couple of times before that my little grandnephew Joseph is mad about theatre and he has a little tiny theatre which is about yay big. And he does puppet shows. So I got this book. You know, one of my bargains, yeah, I've got this book. And it's got crochet finger puppets in of all different kinds and, you know, different ones. And so he's going to be able to do stories. Uh, I've also bought him a set of um, felt ones that I saw on uh, eBay. Very reasonably priced. Because he's a very imaginative child and uh, we do all kinds of, uh, you know, things in the puppets. He makes stories up. I mean, those are like robots. <laughs> There's all kinds of things. There's like the animals in there. And then there's under the sea creatures, you know, that you can get to. Well, those are aliens. I'm sure you can make up plenty of stories with things out of here. And of course, they only take up scraps. 
Um, the only difference is uh, those turtles for Laura. <laughs> she likes the turtles. That's crochet hoobium, by the way. And um, even a mermaid. So I know that he'd be able to. It's just me having patience. You know what my patience is like for little things, but being as he's my great nephew, I shall. Uh, oh, there's octopuses or octopus size. I don't know what the plural of octopus is. Maybe it's just octopus. Uh, I'm sure somebody who's uh, grammatically correct will correct me on that one. Then we've got a crab. So we can do all kinds of underwater. Uh, and there's lots and lots of fish. There's a clownfish on in different colours. And uh, starfish, there's all sorts of things in here. A parrotfish, whatever that is, is very pretty, isn't it? Very bright colours. So I'm sure I'll be able to do them. I mean, I'm not setting myself a target for these things. I'll give him the felt puppets because they've already arrived. But uh, I wanted to do the crochet doll for my great niece, Abby. And uh, then I want to make some puppets for Joseph so he can give us a puppet show at Christmas, next Christmas. So he's really into all that sort of thing. Oh, there's even a cute little hedgehog as well. A cute little hedgehog. Anyway, that's about really... It. Um, the cardigan's finished and the blue cardigan over there is finished, just ready to go. If you're wondering what this is, by the way, it's Paris's hair. <laughs> She's wearing a sun hat at the moment. And this is, well, this is a skirt that I absolutely love, but it's a bit short. I did buy some material hoping to put her head on it, but it was the wrong colour. So I've still not given up yet. I may be going to think about crocheting a wide band you know to go down at the bottom to make it that little bit longer because I love it it's a lovely shade of teal it may look a bit grey on camera but it's actually a, uh, a teal colour but I did get some some teal velvet but it was completely the wrong colour of teal and lace I've found some crochet lace online but it would have cost me about 20 odd pounds so I could have bought another skirt for that really so I think I've got something that might do in my machine knitting cones. So I maybe crochet a, a nice sort of wide lace border. I've got enough books with border patterns in. Sink a ship. So sorry about clanking, this is just me purple jewel. <laughs> I'm going to take this off in a minute. So this will be lovely when I, uh, I wear my um, skirt next time, my lovely skirt. Um, well, at the moment I'm on a frugality, as I think I told you. I'm hoping to save up to get a nice wooden decking out the back. Uh, my stones, my they're like paving stones. And with all the rain over all the years and everything like that, they've all sunk and lifted. Oh, that's Jess. It's not either our dogs, it's Jess down the bottom. Uh, they go like this and like that and every time I step out of them I'm likely to fall flat on my face. So he's widening the deck a bit and um, in wood, widening the deck. And then I'll have room for a table and chairs out there and I can sit out there in the sunshine. If we get any, because I live in England and um, we don't get that much sun. But, yeah, having said that, my niece treated me to go out for my breakfast this morning. We had homemade potato cakes, um, a fried egg and some beans. And then I went into Tesco's, that's our supermarket, nipped up there because I wanted some veggies. I had all the other things in, you know, the meat and stuff, but I didn't have the veggies. And uh, I buy the prepackaged little veggies. It's the expensive way of make, doing them, I know, but when there's only me making them, you just put little holes in them and I put them in the microwave and they're done. And that's easy for me. It's one way I get my five a day, isn't it? <laughs> the family have bought one of those bullet things, you know, that you grind up fruit and veggies and stuff in, but to be quite honest, I'm not that dedicated of a dieter. I have lost a pound. <laughs> it's only one pound, but it's a pound. I've lost a pound. So I'm trying to cut back, basically. I'm not dieting. Um, Trying to cut out all the chocolates, the biscuits, the cake and things I might be tempted with. And I'm um, cutting down on what I'm eating. Like for example in the morning I'd have porridge and I maybe have a couple of slices of toast. Well I'm just having the porridge and no toast. So 
bit, 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 bit. I mean, I've just been out, as I say, today, and I didn't take any of my walking stick. I didn't take my crutches because we were just going straight to the cafe and back. And then I said I wanted to go to Tesco's. I was going to get my scooter out, and she said, oh, well, I'll run you up there if you don't want a shipping order. I said, no, I know a few things. So because I didn't have anything there to lean on my trolley like a little old dear, you know, <laughs> pushing along. Uh, but now I've come back. My back is hurting. So as I finish this off now, I'm ready to start the brown silk off. You know the order I've got for that sweater. So I'm ready to start that off. So that's what I'm going to be doing shortly, as soon as I finish this video. I'm going to be going outside into the beautiful sunshine. We don't get much. I actually saw lovely table, chairs and umbrella when I was in Tesco's. So I said to my niece, I said, that's what I want for Christmas. And she went, <laughs> for Christmas? And I went, yeah, can you all join together? <laughs> It was reduced, but it wasn't that dear. I said, if it's still here at Christmas, they might have reduced it even more. I said, that's what I want for Christmas. A new table and chairs and everything for my decking. She said, right, OK, I'll think about it. <laughs> They're very, very good, my family. Because um, my birthday and my Christmas are close together. If I want anything big, I always say, can you please, please, all club together and get me this, whatever it is, you know, that I want. So like if it's for two two things, two occasions, and they're all joining in, that's like three three families, isn't it, of them joining in. Um, it doesn't work out too expensive than them buying me a present, a t-shirt or something else like that. Uh, because my family never just buy me a t-shirt, whatever I ask for, they always buy me loads of other things, toiletries, God knows what, everything else. I've always got a big bag for them. So um, I do. Want a table and chairs? <laughs> They're not dear ones. Not going top of the range. <laughs> I've actually got two lovely chairs. I don't really remember when my settee had to be thrown away because of my dear, lovely departed Buster. Because he'd weed on it and it made it smelly. Um, I bought two garden chairs temporarily until I got the chairs. Um, I had them for a few weeks until I managed to get two chairs. And then, of course, I've now replaced the two chairs with the sofa. But the two chairs are in here now, and the other sofa's are gone. So they're in the shed. So I'm going to think of bringing them out today because it's such a gorgeous sunny day. And they've been stored in the shed all over the winter, so they're bound to be a bit damp. So I'm going to go in the shed. Mind you, there's a hunter, hunter man spider in there, according to our Ian. Now, he is prone to exaggeration, but he said it's as big as a dinner plate, you know. <laughs> I don't think it's that big. And he said it's right across the doorway as you go in. And he knows I've got this fear, oh, dread of spiders. Especially of the big spiders. He says, and my eyes are laughing, he tells a good tale. He said when he went in there, he said, this spider's saying, what are you doing in my shed? <laughs> Get out of my shed. Don't touch my things. <laughs> I don't know where he gets his tale telling from. My, my dad was a great raconteur. I used to sit and listen to him for hours and hours. I'm sorry now that I never recorded him, you know, because he was a mine of information about the past and about where I used to live. He knew all things that went on in right and where I used to live. What used to be where, who was what, he knew everybody, because it was a very small place at one time. It's big now. Very small place, very insular. And everybody knew everybody else, you know. And of course, when you're a kid, you don't really listen, do you? You listen, because I used to be interested in what he was saying at the time, but I didn't retain it. And now I'm so sorry that I didn't listen and take it in. Because then I would have been able to pass on. I mean, it's like here where I live. I've lived here now for 47 years, I think. Whatever 1968 is, anyway, from then on. And I know so little about the place, you know, the history of it. Um, all I know is the church that I can see from my back bedroom window is, uh, was the church for the whole of the parish all around, including right in Older where I used to live. And uh, I also saw something online where we'd actually got air raid shelters, air raid wardens here, you know, in during the war where bombs had dropped round here during the war. I've got no idea, no idea at all about that. I should take more interest in my surroundings. 
In fact, we were talking today, my niece and I, because her mum uh, is recently widowed, as you know, my brother died in October. And um, she, they were talking about things to get her mum more interested. You know, obviously she went into a bit of a decline, as people do when they're bereaved. And uh, of course the girls are married now, so there's nobody in the house with her. And we were talking about going here, going there, going everywhere. And I said, I always had it planned. When I retired, I had my bus pass, and I was going to go visit all the places that I've never been able to see because I've been working. You know, all the local places, like the art galleries and things like that. And of course, you don't know what's ahead of you in life, do you? I had these terrible spinal problems and I couldn't walk. And even after I had it fixed, I couldn't walk again. And then I had my knee fixed and that wasn't right. So anyway, Taylor wore over. But the crutch of the story I'm trying to say is I can't do it now anymore. I can't go to all these places that I'd love to go to. Uh, if I'd have chosen a smaller scooter, I could go on the tram. I could have done it still, yeah. But now, of course, I've doggy daycare the dog, don't I? My little Gigi. He's, a, he's not here, by the way, because he's at home, because it's weekend. But I will have him, not the next weekend, I think the weekend after, because it's a bank holiday and his parents are going away. I don't mind. I don't mind. And then I'll be doggy daycare in the little dog next door while they go away later in the year. It's all good fun, isn't it? Something to do. <laughs> At least when I talk to the dogs, it's not as if I'm talking to myself because that way you get locked up, don't you? Hoo -hoo. Screw he. But I can discuss which pattern shall I do next, Gigi? You know, uh, shall I do it in this colour? Shall I do it in that colour? And he doesn't answer me, but he looks at me as if he's listening. You know, he's like, mm -hmm. I mean, my Buster was the best. He was so. He'd just lock on you when you were talking to him, you know, as if he was wildly interested in everything you said. And he'd move his head to the side like that, you know. And, you know, I'd say, shall I do this, Buster? You know, and a tail would wag and his eyes would go, you know, and I think, oh, bless, he doesn't understand me, but he thinks he's having a treat. <laughs> I do miss that dog. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love my son's dogs to bits and I love little Gigi, but... My own dog was my, well he wasn't my dog to start off, he was my son's, but while he was my dog he was like a companion I used to chat to, we had long conversations during the afternoon and um, you know I could tell when he got bored he used to go <laughs> and he used to go wander off and <laughs> stop looking at me and I used to think right that's enough chatting now, you've had enough of you Buster. Conversation over for the day. Anyway things are progressing slightly with the house situation and things. Um, so when I am back on my own again, I've got a lot of things to do. Um, I'm going to try and see the bank manager <laughs> to see if he'll let me borrow any money. <laughs> Which he'd probably say no to, but I could only ask. Because I need new windows and I need the patio doing desperately because I'm sick of falling out in the garden. The steps are about yay deep and you know I'm very unsteady on my feet so I just go pitching down and half. And the other day I was stood in the doorway and <laughs> Sky, the tank, as we call her, because she goes through any space, no matter how small it is, decided she wants to go out into the garden at the same time as me. So I'm just tentatively stepping down when she comes charging up behind me. Uh, luckily I was still hanging onto the door frame, otherwise I would have finished up in the grass, you know. <laughs> oh bless her, she's lovely, she doesn't mean it. She's the most gentle soul in the world, but... Oh. Yeah, I don't know whether I told you about those kids on the roof, did I? I don't know. We had kids jumping up and down on the roof the other day, running through everybody's gardens. So we had to have Mr Policeman coming round. Apparently they've been annoying everybody in the neighbourhood, not just us. So we'll see whether we get that sorted. I mean, my flat roof is a flat roof, and you know, who are you, are you liable if they fall off it or they come through it or whatever? Yeah. Ooh. Oops, just looked up and seen a big dust web. It's not a spider web, it's a dust web. No, nope, only got one in that corner. Better do that later, don't I? Yeah. My daughter in law was lovely, she hoovered up and did everything and hoovered the stairs, which I can't do. Cannot do that. It absolutely kills me back. 
I've tried lying down while I hoover them and everything. I just cannot hoover the stairs. I try one of them lightweight ones, but they don't suck up enough. You know the little things you get for a car. We've had those in the past. No suck. They don't. Uh, and my carpet's plain green, of course it shows every bit of fluff and every bit of lint. Anyway, what am I going to do today? Remake the bed. Because it's such a beautiful day, the bedding's blowing on the line. I do love nice fresh bedding when it's just been washed. You know, and dried outside, it's a, a luxury, isn't it, really? <laughs> I always used to say if I had loads and loads of money, I'd have a servant who would change my bed linen every single day put fresh. Oh, what I wouldn't do if I won the lottery. But I don't think the £10 I keep winning is, and, and the lucky dips I keep winning are going to go very far, are they? Not asking for a lot. I don't want several millions. Just one million would be fine. <laughs> Not greedy. One million would be fine. And then I don't know whether I'd move or whether I'd stay here and go on cruises. <laughs> Oh, what a decision I would have to make, if ever I won. I'm sure you've all got things that you want to do, if ever you win the lotto or the lottery or whatever. Anyway, I think that's about it. I think Sue's coming next week. Although she was trying to plan it out, she had a, what do you call it, her agenda. A big pieces of paper with all colours all over them that tells her when she's in, when she's out, when she's on a sleepover, when she's on a day. But she couldn't make any tale of it because it stopped, like, at the end of... Well, this weekend it stopped, so she couldn't tell me what she was on that next week. So I'll have to wait and see when she arrives. Uh, oh, I've got my scan date. That's not this weekend, it's next weekend. Nine o'clock in the morning. <gasps> Be there 15 minutes before. <gasps> Luckily, my niece is on hand. To, she gets up lovely and early, so <laughs> she'll sort of drag me down there. But as you can see, that arm is almost better, although it's still paining up there. But this arm is still painful, painful, painful. But I wish they'd do it all over body scan and then we could all have it done with then. <laughs> but they only scan the little bits they're looking at. You know, if they do head to toe, then they could do everything in one go, couldn't they? And pass it on to the various departments, I wonder. So this is what's wrong with her hip, this is what's wrong with her knee, this is what's wrong with her back, this is what's wrong with her shoulders. This is what's wrong with her head, but I think I need a psychiatrist for that. Yeah. Anyway, it's a beautiful day and I'm full of enthusiasm and being as I don't have to clean, thank you daughter-in-law, except for the dust web in the corner, I'm going to try and get some things done and put into my Etsy shop. Please don't forget to look at my Etsy shop, tell all your friends. <laughs> I'm not begging, I'm not begging, honestly please, but just have a look. Um, and I'm still waiting for Sue to bring some scar some shawls and scarves and things to put in. She keeps telling me she's bringing them and they never arrive. Mm. Then there would be some lovely shawls for you to pick from, wouldn't there? Right, after saying I'm going about 16 times already, I am going. Hope you're having a gorgeous weekend. Hope you've got lovely, lovely weather like I've got here. Bye for now. <laughs>